Are you looking to buy a used Leisure Bay pool table? I mean, I'm guessing you probably are since that's why you're watching this video. You probably heard something about Leisure Bay. Maybe you saw an, a Craigslist ad or a Facebook Marketplace ad for a Leisure Bay pool table and you're wanting to know, is it a decent pool table? Well, that's smart of you. You're doing your research. That is number one key behind in buying any used pool table is do the research on it. And I'm going to give you some tips on Leisure Bay pool tables or give you some information about Leisure Bay pool tables that may or may not sway your decision into buying one. And maybe you've already got one and you're just looking to find out, uh, you know, get validation that you've got a decent table. Let's find out. So let's start off with some of the goods about, about Leisure Bay. What makes them a decent table or at least worth buying? Well, number one, they do make a really nice, or they did. Leisure Bay has actually been out of business since, or the company that was selling Leisure Bay or under the Leisure Bay name has been out of business or they haven't been selling under the Leisure Bay name since 2011. So, you know, Finding parts for broken Leisure Bays might be a little bit of an issue, but they do make a very pretty table. And if you're looking for a more of a piece of furniture than, rather than a, say, a commercial grade table. Now, I'm not talking about a coin operated table, but I'm talking about something more on the lines of like a Gandy Big G or even more to the point, a Brunswick Gold Crown. Okay, if you're looking for something like that, then you're obviously, you know a bit more about pool and you probably won't even be looking at these tables. So, uh, but if you're looking for a, a furniture type table, Leisure Bay might seem very attractive because it is an attractive table. Uh, they, they did go quite a long ways in the styling and finishing and everything to make them beautiful tables. And well, you know, if every table were made as pretty as the Leisure Bay table, that would be a fantastic thing. I really like the styling of Leisure Bay tables. Um, what else makes them attractive? Well, the price. On the used market, Leisure Bay pool tables can be had. Now, I know that there are some people that are asking as much as $2,000 or $2,500 for a used Leisure Bay. That's your asking price. And look, I watch Pawn Stars enough to see that, uh, you know, as Rick says, that's what they're asking for. That's not what they're getting for them. So, you know, I've seen them in the used market for as little as $750 to $1,000. And, you know, that might fall perfectly in line with someone's budget. And it might seem as though that, that the Leisure Bay is attractive in that regard as well the budget on it. Those are about the two things that I can figure that are the pluses. Now let's talk about the downsides. Number one, the finish on Leisure Bay tables. If we look at this table here, okay, and I'm going to get up and I'm going to zoom in. All right. If we look at the finish on here, you'll, you'll see that number one, it's well, it's, it's a dark finish, number one. But if we look right in here, we can see these little chips right here. And if you notice, don't know if you can see it or not, but this is, this is a very small indentation in here. And yet the wood is almost white here. I mean, it's, it, this is right back down to unfinished wood. And this is just a little light. These are just little light flakes. So what that's telling me is that the finish that is on here is only on the surface. There has been no actual dyeing of the wood. There's no stain on the wood. All of the pigment that you see or all of the color that you see is solely on the surface within the finish itself. Okay. Which means any little dent any little ding on here is going to chip off and you're going to see that raw wood immediately underneath. Whereas if we were to go in and actually stain a piece of wood, 
that, that, that color is going to be migrated deeper into the pores of the wood, the fibers of the wood. And if you do get a little chip in the finish itself, it's not going to completely discolor the entire piece, especially on something dark like this. That's not necessarily a good thing. Um, you know, for the money, I think I would rather have something that's finished out a bit better than this. Again, on the surface, it looks decent. But once you start playing on it and, you know, the table starts getting a few little dents and dings, it's really going to show up, you know, it's really going to show up pretty, pretty harsh, pretty drastic. Now, number two on these tables. Number two is the way that the cabinet and the slate liner that they use, which isn't actually a slate liner. In a normal pool table, you would have three individual pieces of slate and then around the per perimeter of each slate, okay, underneath, around the perimeter, you would have affixed to the slate, you would have hmm, roughly one inch by anywhere between half inch and one inch by four inch pieces of either uh, pine, poplar, and, but in most cases you'll see MDF. I know Olhausen uses medium density fiberboard quite a bit in the slate liners of their tables, but the thing about their tables is that, or the slates anyway, is that those slate liners are physically attached. They are glued to the underside of the slate. And here, I'll show you on the overhead, we'll draw it out right here. All right, now with most Leisure Bay pool tables, uh, what you're going to find is that the way that they're constructed is that you have the slate, you have a liner, and then further back here, you're going to have the main cabinet of the pool table. Now, under normal circumstances, this wouldn't be that big a deal, but this liner is MDF. It's particle board. And the slate is unlined slate so when you go to uh, when you go to level the table the liner is actually screwed to the liner is screwed to the frame of the table back in here okay and in order to and and let's say your rail bolts or your I'm sorry your slate screws are going to be back here there's your hole for your slate screw so your slate screw is going to go into here and then screw into your liner. Now, here's the problem. And this is the exact same problem that I ran into with the outdoor pool table. You've got a slate. Your slate is very, very heavy. You got your liner underneath and you're trying to put a wedge in between these two. Well, the slate does not move. The liner does. So as you're driving this wedge in, what's happening, here's your frame of the table. As you're driving this wedge in, this MDF, medium density fiberboard, it flexes downward. Now, I've addressed this on my how to level a pool table video. I've also addressed this with my uh, uh, outdoor pool table installation video. And this seems to be a common practice with some of the lesser pool tables out there. So this is another problem with the table is the way that they're constructed. You know, this just isn't really all that great. All right. When you have that single piece of slate liner, the liner that, you know, that piece of wood that goes in between the slate and the frame itself, if that piece of wood is attached to the frame rather than the slate itself, and it's one piece, when you go to level out each individual piece, you can't really do it without having that MDF or that wood flex down and make it virtually impossible to level out the table properly. So let's look at the last big problem. That's going to be the rubber on these tables. Now, Leisure Bay was not known for using the best rubber in the world. I think the name of it is a Sure Shot 
K66. And I would venture to say it's probably some of the cheapest Chinese rubber that you can get. I don't know whether it's quote unquote the high sulfur comp, uh, content of it or the they didn't mix it properly or the proportions. You know, there's a lot that goes into making rubber and making rubber that's going to last a long time. Now, the rubber on these Leisure Bay tables, they dry rot prematurely, okay? Which, you know, the cost of rubber isn't all that bad. You can purchase rubber on my website for as little as mm, about a hundred bucks, I think, some, somewhere in that neighborhood, hundred dollars. It's not really all that expensive, but where it gets expensive is if you're going to have a professional like me go in and, repl and replace the rubber on these tables, which also means that now you're going to have to replace the cloth as well. So a table that's well, in a, case, uh, in a case of this table, this table was made in 2001, so it's only 20 years old. This table is only 20 years old. And check this out. The rubber on this thing is hard. It was hard as a rock. I'd venture to say that the rubber on this table has been dry rotted for at least the last 10 years. So in 10 years time, that rubber went bad. It was made in November of 2001. By November of 2010, that rubber was hard as a rock. It's finally getting replaced in 2021, but they only got maybe seven years use out of that rubber. Now I've seen Leisure Bay tables that were only two years old that needed new rubber on them because they were dry rotted. That's a big expense. Now I charge $450 to replace the rubber on, on a table. Yeah, the rubber itself is not all that expensive, but the labor that goes into pulling these things apart, and if you're curious, I do have a video showing exactly how I do it. That's $450 right there, plus tack on another $450 for recovering the table. Now again, that's what I charge. And if you're looking for a higher end cloth, that can be as much as $650, $750 for high end cloth, like Simonis, Championship, uh, tour, championship tour edition, you know, it starts really getting pricey. Now, if you're looking to buy one of these tables, now you also have to factor in the cost of the move, which again, in my case, I charge $500 for New Orleans Metro Metropolitan move to Metropolitan move one, you know, no flights of stairs, ground floor to ground floor. So, We've got $900 plus another $500 that's to replace the rubber, to replace the cloth, and to move it. That's $1,400. Now, let's go back to the table itself. If you're, looking, if you're interested in buying a Leisure Bay pool table, look at, the, look at the price of the table itself, okay? If the, if the seller is looking to sell the table for, say, a thousand dollars and you manage to get him down to eight hundred seven hundred dollars let's pick the lower of the two numbers seven hundred dollars you tack on that additional fourteen hundred dollars to do all of the necessary service work on it now all of a sudden you're up to twenty one hundred dollars and personally i think there are better deals on pool tables out there than spending 27 or $2,100 on a Leisure Bay table. Again, you've still got those inherent problems with the finish on it. You've still got the issue of how difficult it is to install. And look, if you're on my channel, there's a good chance that you're probably going to want to do this stuff yourself. You're going to want to do your own cloth. You're going to want to do your own install. And Look, Leisure Bay tables even throw me for a loop sometime when it comes, sometimes when it comes to installing them. They are exceptionally difficult. So were it me, I think I would steer clear of Leisure Bay pool tables unless you just get them at a phenomenal price like 